How's it going, Internet? Welcome back to The Signal. This morning, I woke up on Twitter to a lot of hoopla about Trump's proposed budget cuts to National Endowment for the Arts and PBS. And I say, maybe we should let those programs die. Now, maybe the NEA and PBS served a really vital role back when they were created about 50 years ago. The NEA is a federal agency created by Congress in 1965 that offers support and funding to arts projects and organizations around the country. In 2016, it had a total budget of $148 million. That number is important. $148 million. That's nothing compared to what we're going to talk about. They were also created around a time when it was thought that experts should be really running everything. That experts should be in charge of art. That experts should be in charge of the economy. That experts should be in charge of almost every aspect of human existence. It seems to me that during the age of the internet, of decentralization, uh, power to the people, that services like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, GoFundMe, and various other platforms have allowed people to directly interact with artists and the projects that they desire to see come into existence. And I think overall, that's a great thing. It's not some crazy right-wing conspiracy to destroy the arts. I think it's just easier. It's frictionless. It allows people to have a say in what is actually happening. A lot of Hollywood magazines like Deadline and The Hollywood Reporter seem to be in a bit of hysterics when it comes to these budget cuts. Let's take a look at some of the things they've said. This is from The Hollywood Reporter. The Directors Guild of America, SAG-AFTRA, the Writers Guild of America, West and East, and IATI said they, quote, urge our nation's leaders to preserve funding for the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting as a source of inspiration, action, and economic growth. Our country's arts are integral to our culture. Access to the arts has fueled generations of great Americans, uplifted communities, and helped heal our nation's great divides. Cutting federal support for these programs will not only hurt artists and those who benefit from their work, it will also send a damaging message to future generations about the power of art and its place in our culture. I don't think that's ever been absent from our society. And I don't think that without the NEA or PBS, that's going to go away. Even without the government, artists and communities would get plenty of help from the public, as we'll soon see. Here's another gem. Love of music and the arts brings us together and celebrates the richness of American culture and our spirit of curiosity and creativity. Music and art serve as one of America's greatest exports and support jobs for creators in cities, towns, and rural areas across the country. The White House proposal to eliminate funding for the NEA is short-sighted and alarming. Where do we not have this in America? It seems as though America is overflowing with art, literature, music, and film without help from the state. This level of hyperbole is incredible. This is from Deadline. The cost of public broadcasting is small, only $1.35 per citizen per year, and the benefits are tangible. Increasing schools readiness for kids two through eight, support for teachers and homeschoolers, lifelong learning, public safety, communications, and civil discourse. We live in a capitalist economy, but there is general agreement that the marketplace shouldn't be the sole determinant of what art is produced and accessed. Now that might all be true, but I'd be willing to wager dollars to donuts that places like YouTube with the hundreds of hours per minute that is uploaded to it vastly outperforms public broadcasting and free and quality content. In fact, at this very moment, the public is outspending the National Endowment for the Arts using services like Kickstarter to fund the project that they want to see. Let's look at some comparisons of National Endowment for the Arts versus sites like Kickstarter and how much money they provide the public. According to Harvard Business School, in 2015, from 2009, Kickstarter has raised $1.5 billion. That comes out to a paltry $250 million per year for 80,000 art projects. That was in 2015. So even by today's standards, it's beating the snot out of the NEA. Now, I think it's pretty clear that the amount of money provided by Kickstarter and various other crowdfunding platforms versus the NEA is dramatic. Kickstarter dwarfs them all. So do we even really need an NEA or PBS and a panel of experts declaring or deciding what is good art and what isn't. I feel like that's really our job. Now, I'm not gonna get into other cuts like Meals on Wheels and the other controversies that Trump's proposed budget cuts are proposing, but I do feel it's safe to say that when it comes to the arts, these are two programs that can definitely go. <laughs> and to those ends, I wanna do my tiny little part to help destroy the NEA by offering uh, filmmakers a chance to win my favorite lens in the world, the Helios 44.2, and 50 bucks in an Amazon gift card just for playing a raffle I've put together. Uh, links down below. You have seven more days to enter. $50 gift card from Amazon or Helios 44-2 lens, the flare monster of a lens. It's my absolute all-time favorite lens. I love it. So let's do our part. Let's preempt Trump and his proposed budget cuts and help take down the NEA and PBS one little thing at a time. So enter to win my raffle. Maybe you'll win a lens. Maybe you'll win 50 bucks. Maybe it'll help make your next movie. Maybe it'll help take your next photograph. Maybe you can buy a piece of equipment or some art brushes with it. <laughs> let's help make art great again. As always, thanks for giving me your time. If you're new here, click subscribe. If you like what you heard, click like, comment below. Have a great day.